Yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, on a balmy day here in Chicago. I mean, it's, I don't know, about 18, 20 degrees right now, which, believe me, may not sound real warm, but compared to what we've been dealing with lately is actually uh, spring-like. We got to go out with the Chicago Fire Department. In fact, I'm going to step out of the picture here and let Ed zoom in on the uh, Christopher Wheatley, that giant boat you see tied up uh, on its slip right back there. We're at DuSable Harbor at the uh, eastern edge of the uh, Chicago River where the Chicago Police and the Chicago Fire Department have their marine station. Now, that boat is what they use every couple of days this time of year to break the ice on the Chicago River. And we went along this afternoon on that mission, uh, about a crew of four or five of the Chicago Fire Department Marine Unit. They board the boat, they uh, take it out, and that, that boat is specially designed with reinforced steel and concrete around the middle to, to be very heavy. And it has a type of bow, a rounded bow, that rides up over the ice and simply crushes it and breaks it. How much ice are we talking about? Well, today, uh, about six to eight inches was the thickness of the ice on the Chicago River and in the harbor. Now, it, it, other days, it can be up to a foot. And that boat is capable of breaking ice, we're told, up to a foot and a half thick. How, how thick is that? Well, you could drive a semi-trailer truck onto a foot and a half of ice, yet that boat will go right through it. So they uh, went into the river heading west uh, past the uh, Lakeshore Drive, which you can see in the background there, Lakeshore Drive, the cars crossing on the bridge over the top, uh, into the river all the way west, uh, about a mile to Wolf Point, where the Chicago River splits north and south and turned around and came back. And in the process of doing that, they kind of ran it right down the middle of the river, broke up all the ice, and, uh, and, and opened up that waterway. Uh, one of the questions I had for the person in charge of this mission is, why does the Chicago River need to be open? Why not just let it freeze over, leave the ice in place? Well, there's a handful of reasons for that, he told me. One, is that uh, it's, it's a federal waterway, and so it needs to be kept open for that reason. Also, if they allow it to freeze over, it'll create a very thick, very heavy, very strong sheet of ice on the river that'll grind and do substantial damage to the, uh, to the uh, concrete and the buildings that border the river on either side. And also, they want to have the water open in case there's an accident and somebody accidentally falls into the river, or goes into the water. They want to have as much open water and as little ice as they can so they can set sent divers in, scuba divers, which they actually have been uh, doing. They have, of course, people sometimes walk out onto the ice in Lake Michigan or, 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 or feel as though they can walk on the river. They drop through and they have to send dive teams in to rescue those people. Uh, in fact, the crew that we were with today, earlier today, was uh, practicing their dive rescue. They were in uh, dry suits under uh, 12 inches of ice at the 31st Street uh, Harbor, a little bit south of here. That sounds like a, a terrifying ordeal, but it's something they do on a daily basis. They go under the ice and they do a uh, dive uh, rescue practice. So that was our day on the Chicago River. That is the Christopher Wheatley back there. It is named after a Chicago firefighter who died uh, battling a fire in Chicago in 2010, which is the same year that boat was purchased by the Chicago Fire Department. Hey, so Dan, I did some research and I actually found video from Chicago Fire and I've been showing it um, kind of over you speaking there. Uh, amazing visuals. Mm -hmm. And how thick did you say that ice is? Because I know some people were asking you about that. Yeah, it's about six to eight inches mm. thick right now. It can get up to, uh, it can get a lot thicker than that. They do it every couple of days. We've been in the single digits recently. We've been below zero for quite a few nights over the past couple of weeks. And when the temperatures drop to that cold temperature, the ice will freeze up fairly quickly. In fact, they last uh, plowed the river with that boat just a couple of days ago. And in just the last 48 hours, six to eight inches of ice formed back up on top. The other fun thing about it is when they break up the ice, it is loud. I mean, it's a grinding, crunching noise. It's almost deafening. And then as you go to the back of the boat, you see in the wake of the boat, the, the trailing behind, uh, thousands and thousands of tiny little jigsaw 
puzzle pieces of ice floating in the water that may seem to be fairly innocent, but uh, even those themselves, if anybody were in the water and get hit by one of those, those weigh a lot and are jagged and can, can cause a lot of trouble. And Dane, how often do they do this? How often do they deploy the icebreaker, I guess you could call it? Yeah, a lot of it just depends on weather conditions. Like right now, since about the last three weeks, almost a month, we've been in a cold spell, a real Arctic snap here in Chicago. As I mentioned, overnight temperatures uh, sometimes below zero, certainly in the single digits. Uh, and in that situation, they're out here on the river breaking up the ice every couple of days. Now, last year, well, we had a very balmy winter in Chicago. They only needed to run the icebreaker down the river over a two-week period. A couple years before that, we had uh, just a huge uh, Arctic freeze. Temperatures were very cold for a very long time and deep into the spring. And they were using that boat pretty much all winter and even into uh, April, we're told. All right, Fox 32's Dane Placco out there in Chicago on the Chicago River. Uh, enjoy your, I guess, summer uh, weather, <laughs> like you said. Those are your words, not mine. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad, I got to tell you. It's, it's comfortable. Ed and I, my, Ed, my photographer, he's smiling back there. He's practically <laughs> uh, getting a tan right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, have a lovely day out there. Uh, stay warm, and we'll talk to you soon, right. Dane. Well, the very latest in Chicago there, we're going to step away from that because we do have an update coming out of Houston, Texas with